Good day. For those of you who don't know us, we're the instructional staff for EC150, professors here in Patel and Werner Dietl, and Douglas Harder. In this topic, we're going to discuss the second concept related to the fundamentals of the language, identifiers. So in this topic, we will I define identifiers and discuss their purpose. We will review some of the identifiers we've already seen. We will discuss case sensitivity. We will look at naming conventions. We will also define reserved identifiers and keywords within the C++ programming language. Now, apart from the literals and, of course, the other various symbols on the keyboard, we've seen words appearing in our code that appear to refer to something, either in an action or perhaps performing some sort of operation. These include int, main, standard, C out or console out, end of line, and return. Such symbols are called identifiers. Some of them, such as int and return, are intimately associated with the C++ programming language. For all of the others, they are there to allow the programmer to refer to something of significance to the program. Now, each of these identifiers has a different significance. We're just going to describe this right now, but we will get more into detail in future topics. So first, int. Int is just a type and it's a way of representing an integer. Main. Main is the name of the function. Standard. This is a namespace, and this goes way beyond the scope of this course. We'll just discuss it very briefly. However, every single identifier within the standard library normally needs to be preceded by std colon colon. So, for example, standard cout is an object in the IO stream library that allows you to print. Standard end of line is another object in the standard library, specifically the IO stream library, that indicates that we are to print an end of line character. Return is a keyword that indicates that the next value is to be returned from the function at hand. In this case, main returns zero. Now, an identifier is any combination of underscores, letters, and numbers where the first character is not a number. All of these can be used as identifiers. White space and any other symbol on the keyboard cannot be used. Also, case uh, identifiers are case sensitive. So, for example, the identifiers lowercase a0 and uppercase a0 are as different, as far as the compiler is concerned, as the identifiers sign and gcd are. So be very careful as to what you use. Now, in the upcoming weeks, we are going to use identifiers to refer to local variables, parameters, function names, types, and classes. Now, most of you haven't heard of these words before, so don't worry about it, but basically identifiers indicate something of significance. Now, a small number of identifiers are keywords to the C++ language, and those are what we're going to cover later on in this topic. But for the most part, all other identifiers are given significance by the programmer. Basically, it means something specific to the program at hand. And the significance can be determined by looking at the declaration. Every single identifier you ever begin using, you must begin using first by having a declaration. The declaration is the first time the identifier is seen in your program. So we've already seen that. First, we had a function declaration. And once we had the function declaration, we saw the function definition. Now, once again, an identifier is any sequence of 
an underscore or letter followed by zero or more additional underscores, letters, or numbers. So all of the following are completely valid identifiers. One character, uh, something that seems like a, an abbreviation, say number of elements, dim three, array class, return value. The first character cannot be a number. So you can use vector underscore 3D, but you cannot use 3D underscore vector as an identifier. So that is verboten. Now, to help the programmer with identifying the significance of an identifier, very often the programmer who comes up with the identifier will choose a phrase in English and then create some sort of identifier out of that phrase. The point being, the phrase describes what the identifier is actually signifying. Now, how we create these names actually is something of a naming convention. We actually are going to use snake case, and this is very common in both C and C++. So we may have a linked list object, and so we will call it, or class, and we will link those two words together with an underscore. Is sorted obviously indicates that something is in the correct order, and array capacity. So there we have something called an array. It has a capacity. All of these words are joined by an underscore. So now the reader can look at these and understand approximately or at least get an idea as to what the significance of these identifiers are. If you're using Java, you may use camel case where you juxtapose the words instead and capitalize the first letters, unless it may be the first letter of the entire identifier. And in some cases, some companies will just use juxtaposition where you just jam all the words together. When you join a company, you will be expected to follow the naming convention used by that company. Humorously enough, you can actually use just an underscore as an identifier. But if you do that, there's a special place reserved for you in hell. If you look up obfuscated C contest, 12 days of Christmas, you can download this code and execute it. Now, some identifiers are actually reserved for use by the compiler. So basically, never define an identifier that starts with an underscore. So do not use something like underscore name. And never define an identifier that has two adjacent underscores anywhere within it. So again, there's no reason to do this. Just don't do it. Now, there's something really bizarre about this. Because the compiler uses these, your code may work because the compiler didn't use your specific identifier you chose that followed the above naming conventions. It may not work because your identifier conflicts with an identifier used by the compiler. The worst case scenario is, well, it works now, but when, when, the, up, when the compiler is updated, they happen to choose the same identifier and now your code no longer compiles. So just avoid these reserved identifiers. You probably don't even have to worry about it because you're not going to do this. Also, some identifiers are reserved by the programming language to identify specific features within the language. These are keywords and they cannot ever be used for any other purpose whatsoever. We've already seen two keywords, int and return. The first is an integer type. The second is a statement that the function is returning and what follows is the value that is being returned. The identifier main is not a keyword. It's just the name of a function. And yes, our main function does something boring. It prints hello world but it's something that we have defined. 
Now, there's approximately 100 keywords in the C++ programming language. We're going to see about 30 of these throughout this course. And don't worry, you don't have to memorize all of these. Instead, as you are introduced to them, you will get used to them and you will understand their significance. And if you ever actually do try to use a keyword as an identifier, the compiler will simply uh, return an error message indicating that your use is invalid. So, in summary, after this topic, you now understand what an identifier is in C++. You know that the purpose of the identifier can be seen in its declaration, and the declaration is always the first appearance of any identifier in your code. You understand the concept of case sensitivity, and you are aware that there are specific identifiers that are reserved for the compiler, and also keywords within the C++ programming language. Here's the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!